Thank you, Mr. Vice, Vice, Mr. Vice President. I'm Douglas, a Brazilian non binary migrant in Egypt, making this statement on behalf of 14 transgender and gender diverse activists from the global south and east. We commend the mandate for addressing the complex interplay between freedom of religion and belief and rights of LGBT people, which are often presented as mutually exclusive. We celebrate that the report mentions indigenous communities and how they have recognized diverse identities over the centuries. On the other hand, it portrays how the colonial imposition of foreign beliefs and the marginalization of indigenous cultures has led to the erasure and suppression of indigenous gender diverse identities and spiritual practices. As the report shows, while LGBT people and religious communities are constantly put in opposition with each other, members of the LGBT community also seek a connection with the sacred. We are entitled to be part of welcoming religious communities and to freely practice our beliefs. There is no sin in our love or in our existence. The use of religion as a weapon to promote violence and war instrumentalized portrayal of LGBT people as a threat to the concepts of traditional family and the nation. Moreover, religious-based groups are often funded to develop anti-LGBT and anti-trans narratives, adding to our historical and structural exclusion. Our question to the independent expert is, where he sees the mandate's role in supporting the crucial dialogue between states, religious leaders, and LGBT and gender-diverse people with different opinions and faiths? Thank you.